Hi everyone, Casey here. Welcome back to my channel, Casey on Location. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use multi-track recording with the Zoom PodTrack P4 and upload a test demo podcast episode to the Anchor Podcast Host website. For this video, I'm filming with the Canon Vixia G60 camcorder set at its highest 4K quality at 150 megabits per second. The camera's audio level is set manually at 35, and for the audio, I'm recording with the Rode Wireless Go lavalier system. The Rode transmitter is clipped right here, just below my collar, and I'm only using the built-in microphone on the Rode transmitter. And the gain level is at the lowest setting. For the main light, I'm using the Godox SL60 LED light with a Fotix Raha 65 softbox and honeycomb grid. The power is set for about 50% brightness at 5500 degrees Kelvin temperature and the light is placed right there. Here we have the Zoom PodTrack P4. For this demonstration, I will simulate having a host and co-host for recording a podcast episode. I have two separate microphones attached to the PodTrack P4. On channel 1, the Audio-Technica ATR2100X mic is plugged in. Here's the Audio-Technica ATR2100X mic, it's plugged into channel 1. On channel 2, the Shure SM58 mic is plugged in. Here is the Shure SM58, and that is plugged into channel 2. I have the gain dial set to 6 on both channels 1 and 2. So here's channel 1 and here's channel 2 and they're both set to 6 on the gain dial knob. The other channels 3 and 4 are set to 0 on the gain dial because those channels are not used. Here's channels 3 and 4. Because no microphones are attached, those are set to 0 gain. I'm going to pretend to be both the host and co-host and play an intro and outro jingle so that the final recording will have three separate inputs used for this demonstration. There will be a total of three separate audio files, including the sound pad jingles. I have a simple portable external speaker plugged into one of the headphone ports at the bottom so that you can hear the audio spoken into the microphones. Also, you can hear the intro and outro when I play the sound pads. Here is the external speaker right over here. At the end of the video, I will show you how to process the separate multi-track files and to combine them into one single file for uploading to the Anchor Podcast host website. Before I continue any further, I want to first go over my setup for what gear I'm using for this video. I will post Amazon links below for all the items shown if anyone is interested. First item is the PodTrack P4 right over here. I'm using a SanDisk 128GB Extreme Pro memory SD card. And here is the SD card in my hand right here. The Extreme Pro card is the fastest UHS-1 speed card available without overspending on the more expensive UHS-2 speed card. The Extreme Pro transfer rate is very fast for recording and transferring audio files to your computer. So this is the one I recommend to use. Instead of using two AA batteries inside the PodTrack P4, I'm using this powerful Anchor brand 20,000 milliamp rechargeable USB battery bank so that it will power the PodTrack P4 for many hours so you don't have to worry about two AA batteries dying quickly while recording an important podcast. The PodTrack P4 is able to accept power from this Anchor battery by connecting a USB-C cable from the PodTrack P4's DC 5V USB-C port located on the left side right here and the other end of the cable is connected to the battery. A lot of people ask me what type of stand I'm using to hold the PodTrack P4 off the table. I use a couple different stands. The one I'm using now is the Dinkum Systems Action Pod Pro, which is right here. This is an adjustable clamp that is normally used for camera equipment. What is cool about this Dinkum Action Pod is that it can clamp anywhere on my desk. Plus, it has an adjustable gooseneck, so you can position and angle the pod track. Let me give you a demonstration. So I'm going to remove the clamp off my desk. Notice that it opens and closes, and I can reposition it anywhere on my desk. And this adjustable gooseneck can be moved left and right, up and down, and you can angle it exactly the way you want, so you can better access the PodTrack P4 and see the screen better. 
you will also need to get a universal smartphone clamp with a quarter inch thread that will hold the pod track and will also attach to the Dinkum Action Pod stand or any other type of stand with a quarter inch thread. The reason you need this smartphone clamp is because the PodTrack P4 has no quarter inch screw in threads to attach onto a stand. As a matter of fact, the P4 has no screw in threads at all. That's why you need a clamp that does have the necessary quarter inch threads. You can get an adjustable smartphone clamp such as this one by Manfrotto that has a quarter inch threads both on the back and the bottom. Here is the Manfrotto smartphone clamp. It's adjustable, so if I just do that, it opens and closes. It's spring-loaded, and notice that here on the back has quarter-inch threads as well as the bottom. So you need a clamp such as this to clamp onto the rear of the PodTrack P4. And notice that there is a clamp right here that's holding the back side of the PodTrack P4. And this smartphone clamp does have a quarter inch thread on the back, which in turn is connected to the Action Pod Pro, which also has quarter inch threads. So that's how I'm able to make all this setup work together. What's even more useful is that this Dinkum Action Pod clamp can also do double duty for easily holding my headphones very securely. These are the Audio Technica. M20X monitoring headphones, which I use for recording and works great. So notice that the ActionPod Pro has this clamp right here, this handle part, which can easily hold up my headphones with no problem and very securely. The other useful stand that I like a lot for holding the PodTrack P4 is this Joby brand mini tripod with an adjustable locking ball head. So here is the mini Joby tripod. And when I close the legs, notice that it's contoured with a curve so that I can easily and comfortably hold it in my hand if I want to. And this, there's a lever right here. When I press the lever, it will release this locking ball head so that I can reposition the Manfrotto smartphone clamp in different directions. So I'm going to press the knob right now. And now I can easily reposition the top of the smartphone clamp. And then when I release the lever, like so, then this locks into place. So let me give you a demonstration of how I can use this setup here for holding the PodTrack P4 on the table. So let me just put this right now for now on the table. And I'm going to remove the PodTrack P4 from the current stand. Okay, so now the PodTrack P4 is just loosely held in my hand. And here's the Joby tripod with the Manfrotto smartphone clamp. And what I'm going to do is clamp the back side of the PodTrack P4. And notice, as I mentioned earlier, that there are no quarter inch threads whatsoever. There's no threads whatsoever to be able to securely attach the PodTrack P4 onto a stand. Therefore, you need something like this uh, smartphone clamp, which does have the quarter inch threads here. So I'm just going to simply do this and then open the clamp. That way it's securely clamped onto both sides of the PodTrack P4 and notice, look at that. It's held very securely. I mean, it's not going anywhere, no problem. So now let me just put this on the table. And as mentioned earlier, there is a lever right here that when I press it, I can then reposition the PodTrack P4 and when I let go of the lever, it's securely held in place. So I can move it up, adjust it so, or I can adjust it or angle it down a little bit more so that I can be able to better easily view the LCD screen and be able to access the control buttons better. So th this is the other stand that I really like a lot and it's also one of my favorites. So I'm also going to provide Amazon links for this 
Joby tripod legs, as well as the Manfrotto smartphone clamp. And I'll also let you know that Manfrotto also has their own Manfrotto brand mini tripod legs and smartphone clamp made by Manfrotto that comes packaged as a kit. Again, I will provide Amazon links below, and I just wanted to be able to demonstrate that to you so that you can see how the Potrack P4 can be held securely on top of a table with no problems with these stands. Next up is this Rode SC9 TRRS 3.5mm smartphone cable for making remote phone call connections. Even though this video is not about remote phone call recording, I normally keep this very important cable attached to the Potrack P4 all the time for whenever I want to record a guest remotely on channel 3. There is also another TRRS smartphone cable made by Cable Matters, which is right here and costs less than the Rode brand. Here we go. So plus the Cable Matter brand comes in three different lengths, whereas the Rode SC9 cable only comes in 4.9 inches in length. But I will also tell you that the Rode cable is a much better made cable, plus it's the same cable that works perfectly for the Rode Rodecaster Pro in case one day you get that. Again, I will provide Amazon links to these necessary smartphone cables in case you want to use your PodTrack P4 for recording guests remotely using the Channel 3 smartphone connection. Next up are my two favorite dynamic cardioid microphones attached to the PodTrack P4. On Channel 1, the Audio-Technica ATR2100X microphone is attached. I really like this microphone because it's very well designed, plus it's unique in that it has dual XLR and USB ports. This means I'm able to use this microphone for the PodTrack P4, which only takes XLR microphones, or I can also use this to plug into my laptop computer using a USB cable for doing Zoom video call meetings. That's what makes this microphone very versatile. This mic even has a built-in headphone port and headphone volume knob, so you can plug in your headphones to monitor your recording in real time. There is also an on-off switch for using the mic in USB mode. So let me demonstrate everything that I just described. Let me just remove this XLR cable from the bottom of the microphone for now so that I can show you here at the bottom. So those are the three pins for the XLR cable connection. And over here is the USB-C port for connecting a USB-C cable directly into your computer. And this 3.5 millimeter port here is to plug in your headphones and over here there's a knob that adjusts the volume so that you can listen to the audio from your headphones for real-time audio monitoring and over here uh, there's an on off switch that works in USB mode I also have this five dollar wind foam attached uh, to the top of the capsule so for only $99 this Audio-Technica ATR2100X microphone is a bargain with great sound quality and even comes with a USB and XLR cable in the box. My next favorite microphone is the legendary Shure SM58. This mic is very compact with a simple design and is nearly indestructible and has been used by many industry professionals for decades. Millions of users swear by this microphone for both vocal and music recording, so you can't go wrong with this mic. Plus, I find it very compact. It's noticeably smaller than the Audio-Technica microphone when I compare it side by side. So here is the Shure SM58 mic, and over here is the Audio-Technica mic. And notice when I have it side by side, the Audio-Technica mic is definitely larger in diameter whereas the Shure SM58 microphone is more compact. There's definitely a difference in size and weight. So the Shure SM58 S microphone does not have any of the same features of the Audio-Technica mic, such as dual USB and XLR uh, ports. This does not have any of that. However, for only $89, this microphone is a bargain and sounds great. 
I chose the SM58S model that has a built-in on-off switch for only a few dollars more, which I think is a useful feature in case you want to pause during a recording. So right here is the on-off switch. It's off right now, and right now it's on. So for only about $5 more, it's better to get the S model for the SM58, in my opinion. So I think this is a very uh, good bargain and it sounds great for the price. Next up, I want to show you two different microphone stands that I'm using. For the Audio-Technica mic right here, I'm using this podium stand with an adjustable gooseneck clamp. I really like this adjustable gooseneck stand with an adjustable clamp at the bottom because you can easily place this anywhere on the table and you can easily adjust the angle to position the microphone close to your mouth for recording. So let me give you a demonstration. So let me just loosen the bottom of this clamp right here and it just comes right off the table easily. I can then reposition the stand anywhere else on the table. Just tighten it like so. And this adjustable gooseneck at the top here can be adjusted left, right, back, forward. And ideally you want to angle it closer to your mouth like so so that you can speak very closely to the capsule of the microphone for the most ideal recording quality. So that's why I really like this adjustable gooseneck clamp because you can position it in many different ways uh, for the most ideal position. For the Shure SM58 microphone, I have this mini tripod mic stand sitting on the table that can easily fold up into a small package. It's a little bit on the short side, but I still like it because it can easily fit into any carry case and takes up very little space. So let me give you a demonstration. There is a knob right here that can loosen or tighten. And if I loosen it up, I can then fold up the legs so that it becomes very compact. And it's not long at all. I mean, look at this. It's pretty short, actually but it can easily fit into a carry case and go anywhere with you. And so that's why I also like this particular mic stand. For XLR microphone cables, I really like this Cable Matters brand sole on Amazon. I prefer these short three feet and six feet length XLR cables, which makes it easy to use and to transport around without having a long tangled mess. Amazon sells these Cable Matters brand three feet and six feet short cables in a two pack at a really good price. So for example, here is a really short three feet XLR cable that's connected from channel one into the Audio-Technica microphone. And on channel two, I have a six feet cable going from uh, channel two into the Shure SM58 microphone. So I prefer these shorter three feet and six feet length XLR cables, which just makes it easier to use compared to the much longer 10 feet, 15 and even 20 feet XLR cables that are just way too long for my needs. So I covered quite a bit of material here regarding all the different pieces of equipment that I'm using for this particular setup right here. And again, I will give Amazon links to all these items mentioned for my setup shown here. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. Okay, let's do a test recording. I'm going to hit the record button and play my intro jingle on the sound pad to get started. Here we go. Hello and welcome to another podcast episode by your host, Casey Chung. Thanks for joining us. Let's get started. Hey, it's Casey Sr. here, your host for this podcast. How's my co-host Casey Jr. doing today? Hey, Casey Jr. here. I'm having a wonderful day. What topic are we discussing for this podcast episode? We will talk about how to start your own podcast show using the Zoom Podtrack P4 and Anchor for hosting our show. That's a great topic. I like it. Let's do it. Okay, that was a fantastic episode. Thanks for listening, everyone. And that concludes this podcast. I'm your host, Casey Chung. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to catch you again soon on our next episode. Okay, I already ended the recording on the Podtrack P4, and what I'm going to do after this video is finished is to include the actual recording from the Podtrack P4 in post-sync, so you will hear the audio that was recorded using these two different microphones, which are the Audio-Technica ATR2100X and the Shure SM58 microphone. 
At this point, I'm going to transfer the finished recording to my computer. There are two different ways of doing this. Either remove the SD memory card from the PodTrack P4 and insert into my computer, or just plug in a USB-C cable into my computer and transfer the file, which I find is easier and more convenient. That's what I'm going to do because I already have a USB-C cable connected from the PodTrack P4 into the laptop computer. So here is the USB-C cable connected into the USB port on the left side of the PodTrack P4. The other end of the cable is connected into my Windows laptop computer, which is right back there. The other USB-C cable is for the DC 5 volt port connected to this Anchor brand 20,000 milliamp battery that's been powering the PodTrack P4 for many hours. So now let me just zoom into the LCD screen for the next step. Okay, so on the PodTrack P4, I will now press the menu button, which is right here. And I'm going to go right here to where it says File Transfer. Sometimes you might have to scroll up or scroll down before you can highlight the File Transfer setting. And then you press the Record button, which is the same as the Enter button. And now it's in File Transfer mode. So now that the PodTrack P4 is in file transfer mode, my computer will recognize the PodTrack P4 as an external hard drive. For my own Windows laptop computer, the PodTrack P4 shows up as the letter D drive that says PFSD. So here it is right here. You will notice that there are a bunch of different files and folders after I open the P4SD main folder. So let me double click to open that. And there are two important items that I want to point out here. The audio file at the bottom is the combined stereo mix file that I just finished recording. So right here, where I have it highlighted, that is the combined stereo mix file that I just finished recording. The file is named by the year first, then the month and date, then the time in military hours. So this last one here at the bottom is the combined stereo mix file that combines the audio from mic 1 plus mic 2 plus the sound pad jingle of the intro and outro jingles. I'm going to play this file now to make sure it is in fact the combined mixed file. So let's play it now. Welcome to another podcast episode by your host, Casey Chung. Thanks for joining us. Let's get started. Hey, it's Casey Sr. here, your host for this podcast. How's my co-host Casey Jr. doing today? Hey, Casey Jr. here. I'm having a wonderful day. What topic are we discussing for this podcast episode? We will talk about how to start your own podcast show using the Zoom Podtrack P4 and Anchor for hosting our show. That's a great topic. I like it. Let's do it. Okay, that was a fantastic episode. Thanks for listening, everyone. And that concludes this podcast. I'm your host, Casey Chung. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to catch you again soon on our next episode. Okay, great. So that is confirmed. That was the actual recording that went into the PodTrack P4 earlier. So let me just exit out of that file clip. So now let me show you the next thing that is important right up here. There is a folder called P4 Multitrack. This is where the separate audio clips are located for channel 1 plus channel 2 plus the sound pad jingles. The other yellow folders called P4 Settings plus Android are useless and not important. So I'll just ignore those folders. So here is the P4 and Android. So ignore those. And these other audio files are just simply music files, which are short jingles that I added previously in case I want to use them for the sound pad, so I'll ignore these as well. So now let's open the P4 multi-track folder, and you will see more yellow folders that are arranged by date and time. I'm going to click on this bottom folder here, which is the recording we just finished. Notice that it's also named by the year, then month and day, then time in military hours. So let's open that folder. The individual multi-track audio files that I am interested in are called Mic 1, 
plus mic 2, plus the sound pad, which is the intro and outro jingles. So you'll notice when I click and open on mic 1 file, there's only the voice of Casey Sr. speaking. So let's go ahead and play mic 1 file. Hey, it's Casey Sr. here, your host for this podcast. How's my co-host Casey Jr. doing today? Hey, Casey Jr. here. I'm having a wonderful day. What topic are we discussing for this podcast episode? We will talk about how to start your own podcast show using the Zoom Podtrack P4 and Anchor for hosting our show. That's a great topic. I like it. Let's do it. Okay, that was a fantastic episode. Thanks for listening, everyone. Okay, now let's click on mic 2, and that should be the voice of Casey Jr. speaking. So let's go ahead and play the mic 2 channel. Hello, and welcome to another podcast episode by your host, Casey Chung. Thanks for joining us. Let's get started. Hey, it's Casey Sr. here, your host for this podcast. How's my co-host Casey Jr. doing today? Hey, Casey Jr. here. I'm having a wonderful day. What topic are we discussing for this podcast episode? We will talk about how to start your own podcast show using the Zoom Podtrack P4 and Anchor for hosting our show. That's a great topic. I like it. Let's do it. Okay, that was a fantastic episode. Thanks for listening, everyone. And that concludes this podcast. I'm your host, Casey Chung. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to catch you again soon on our next episode. Okay, perfect. So that was the mic 2 file. Let's close out of that. And now when I click on the sound pad, the intro will play at the beginning and the outro will play at the end. And there will be silence in the middle. Let's go ahead and open that. Hello and welcome to another podcast episode by your host, Casey Chung. Thanks for joining us. Let's get started. So that was the intro from the sound pad file. And there will be silence for, oh, another 15, 20 seconds or so. Sorry for the delay. There's actually a little countdown timer right here, or not timer, but there's a little progress bar. So pretty soon the outro, there it is. That concludes this podcast. I'm your host, Casey Chung. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to catch you again soon on our next episode. Okay, so perfect. We heard uh, all the audio files from mic 1 plus mic 2 plus the sound pad uh, file as well, so that all turned out very well. Now at this point, I have a choice. I can either choose to do some post-processing of one or more of the separate audio files if, for example, there is something wrong that I want to fix. For example, maybe the audio from my co-host might be too loud or too low, or maybe there is something else that's not quite right that you want to improve. That is the beauty of recording in multi-track, which the Podtrack P4 will do automatically in a separate folder. It is not necessary to enable multi-track recording. The PodTrack P4 will automatically record in multi-track and save these separate tracks in a separate folder. It is very difficult to repair an audio file from one of the speakers if the recording was only done in a combined file. However, because the PodTrack P4 also records each speaker in a separate audio track, that means I can more easily fix the audio separately for each person. After everything is fixed in post-processing, I can then combine the separate tracks into a single file for publishing to Anchor. Or let's say the audio is already perfect for every speaker and nothing needs to be fixed. In that case, you can simply use the combined file and upload that right away to your podcast hosting website. So now I'm going to give you a demonstration of how to use the separate multi-track files for fixing and post-processing and to combine into a single file. 
I'm going to open the free open source audio software called Audacity. If you don't already have Audacity installed on your computer, you should because it's free and it works well for this next demonstration. Let's pretend there is something wrong with your audio from mic 2. Maybe the audio is too loud or too quiet and you want to fix it so it sounds better. At this point, I'm going to refer to the University of YouTube because there are many good tutorials on how to fix audio files using Audacity. So let me just minimize the Audacity app for now and bring up YouTube on my browser. Okay. So, for example, here's a YouTube video on fixing vocal recordings. Let me just play this for a short time to give you an example. Now we've got the envelope tool. Now this is what it looks like, and like I said, it helps you control the volumes. So you can left click, as you can see, it will lay out a dot, and I can bring this in, and you can see it will help us control how loud this volume will be. We can left click again, say it's gone quiet here, we can bring it back up. And it's just an easier way of helping us control the levels of our audio. So they... Okay, so I thought that was a pretty good example of how to fix your audio if your levels may be a little bit too high or too low. And so you can fix it in post sync. And this is a pretty good YouTube tutorial on how to do that using the free Audacity app. So I will post the link to this video in the description below. If you do a search in YouTube for how to use Audacity for better vocals, you will see many videos for how to post-process your audio files. So here's the search box and just enter the words how to use Audacity for better vocals, hit the search button, and then I get all of these various videos here. Here's the first one up on top. It says how to make your voice sound better in Audacity. Next one. How to improve voice quality in Audacity. Next, Audacity tutorial, easy beginner's guide to mixing vocals. Next, how to change your voice with Audacity. Make your voice sound better in Audacity. Make your voice sound amazing in Audacity. Make your voice sound better like studio quality in Audacity. It just keeps getting better. So, if I keep scrolling down, you'll notice that there is just a lot of content for how to improve your audio quality using this free app called Audacity. So I really encourage you to check out YouTube and see all the various videos for how to use Audacity app. All right, next up, let me just click on this other tab here. There is this website called microphonebasics.com. And there is an article titled, Five Simple Steps to Make Your Voice Sound Better in Audacity Fast. That's a great catchy title. It says here, Beginner's Guide to, uh, Beginner's How-To Guide for Great Sounding Audio. Step one, remove background noise in the audio track first to create a clean slate. Okay, that's a good first start. Next, step two, use the equalizer to boost the bass across the vocal frequencies. Sounds good. Step three, double your audio track for depth. All right. Next up, use the compressor feature. It says here, this tool makes quiet voices sound louder or faraway voices sound closer. This is good for professionals out there, but great for those who can't afford a super expensive quality microphone as well. That sounds excellent. I keep scrolling down. You'll see there's really quite a bit of details on how to improve your audio. So I will post a link to this website as well. So I encourage you to uh, check out all these various resources, both on online for uh, websites and YouTube videos and that way you can really learn how to better improve your audio fast especially using the Audacity app. Okay so now with your newfound knowledge on how to fix your audio files using Audacity let's say you are now finished fixing the audio from either mic 1 or mic 2 
and you are ready to combine your separate audio files into a single file so you can publish your recording to your favorite podcast hosting website. Open the Audacity app. So here on the left side of the screen is the Audacity app. There's a little pop-up window here. Just click on the OK button to get rid of that message. Now go to the multi-track folder from the PodTrack P4, which is right here on the right-hand side of the screen, and simply drag and drop the separate audio tracks into Audacity. First, I'm going to drag mic1 file here. Here's the mic1 file. I'm going to drag it over here into Audacity. Boom, there it goes. Then next, I'm going to drag the mic2 file right here and drag it. That's wrong. I didn't want to play that. You want to drag it, not play it. And I'm going to drag the mic2 file just below the mic1 file, like so. Perfect. Now I'm going to drag the sound pad file below the mic2 file. So let me drag that over here. Okay, boom, that's perfect as well. So you'll notice that the sound pad looks like two separate files, and so that's normal. As for the other files that say phone and USB, I'll just ignore those because those channels were not used. I have now maximized the Audacity app so that it now shows full screen. So now that all these separate audio clips are loaded into Audacity, the next step is to click on Tracks, then Mix, then Mix and Render to New Track. So let me show you that step by step. So on top of the menu here, click on Tracks, then click on Mix, then next is Mix and Render to New Track, which is right here. Then the Audacity app will rearrange all the audio files and look a little differently. So the next step now is to click on File at the top left here. Then click on Export. Then Export as MP3. And then you'll get this window that pops up. I prefer to save the file as MP3 because the quality is high enough and it will upload faster to Anchor. Otherwise, you can choose to export as a higher quality WAV file if you prefer. So the next step is to name the file. So where it says file name here, go ahead and name that to something that makes sense. In this case, for example, I'm going to name it Casey podcast episode 01 season 01 okay sounds good to me you should name the file in a way that you want for it to be shown on anchor for your listeners to see for the mp3 quality you can choose different settings such as insane or standard it's up to you how much quality level you prefer for this demonstration I will choose the lower standard quality for faster uploading. Otherwise, you can choose the higher insane quality if you prefer. So here are the choices. Insane or extreme or standard or medium. For this example, I'm going to choose the standard quality setting. Then click on the save button right here. Then you'll get a pop-up window that says your tracks will be mixed down and exported as one stereo file. So go ahead and click OK. And for the next window on Edit Metadata Tags, I just ignore it and press the OK button. At this point, I'm done with the Audacity app. I'm going to minimize the Audacity app, and I will find the saved file on my computer desktop. Okay, so here's the mp3 file on my desktop that I just saved from the Anchor app. Let's listen to this saved combined recording file to make sure everything sounds good before uploading to Anchor. So let's go ahead and play this. Hello and welcome to another podcast episode by your host, Casey Chung. Thanks for joining us. Let's get started.
Hey, it's Casey Sr. here, your host for this podcast. How's my co-host Casey Jr. doing today? Hey, Casey Jr. here. I'm having a wonderful day. What topic are we discussing for this podcast episode? We will talk about how to start your own podcast show using the Zoom Podtrack P4 and Anchor for hosting our show. That's a great topic. I like it. Let's do it. Okay, that was a fantastic episode. Thanks for listening, everyone. And that concludes this podcast. I'm your host, Casey Chung. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to catch you again soon on our next episode. Okay, that sounds fine to me. So now let's upload this file to Anchor. So here is the Anchor.fm dashboard website. Anchor is a free podcast hosting website that is owned by Spotify. I like Anchor because it's easy to use and easy to sign up for a free account. On the right column here, it says click to upload or drag files here. So if I click this, it's going to show me all the files that's on my desktop that I can choose to upload. I'm going to cancel out of that. I find an easier method is to just simply drag and drop the audio file into the box. So here is my audio file that I finished saving in Audacity. I'm just going to drag it into this box and let go. So now there is a message that says processing and this circle is spinning around. Because it's a small file, it will finish processing quickly. So boom, it's already done. So then I press the Save Episode button right here, and the whole world can hear my latest podcast episode. So that's a quick demonstration of processing and uploading a multi-track recording to Anchor. There are more features included in Anchor, such as hitting this large red record button here so you can instantly start recording your podcast directly from your computer if you want to. Here's the big red record button. Anchor also has a free smartphone app so you can record and upload instantly using your phone if you want to. So here's the smartphone Anchor app. If I press the record button here, I can start recording right away. So I encourage you to sign up for your own free Anchor account so you can start podcasting right away. So I hope you found this video helpful on how to use the Zoom Podtrack P4 for recording and multi-track and uploading your podcast episode to Anchor. Please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel to see more videos like this in the future. And hey, by the way, my wife Wendy says I need to smile more and lighten up when making these videos because she says I look too serious. If you agree with my wife or you think I should do things differently, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again in the next video.